Hello and welcome to Analyzing Avatar. This week we are taking a chat, or having a little chat about um, the Earth King. Um, the episode of the episode, the episode that the gang. You, sorry, Chris. You, you, you alright? Yeah. What was that noise? What noise? It was like it was like a game or something started playing. It wasn't my head. It sounded. It sounded like it was coming through my headphones. Oh, that's strange. Well, well, I'll just keep going, shall I? So this is the episode where the gang, the gang, um, are in the. <laughs> the why are you playing cheeky girls? <laughs> I couldn't resist. Um, I don't know if you remember, Chris, but many, many episodes ago, I promised you that we'd have a cheeky avatar at some point. <laughs> and then I forgot about it. Uh, so I decided I'd make this week's episode. So the the <laughs> only way in your head to make something cheeky is to randomly play the cheeky girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So anyway, where was I? Uh, this is the episode where the gang uh, convinced the Earth King um, all about the stuff that's going on, um, and then they uh, they all get notes from they all get letters from home explaining what's going on, and they all separate at the end. It's quite a. They said, "No, I can't even. I can't concentrate myself with that in the background." Um, I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to cast any aspersions about the set about the state of the cheeky girl's career, but I reckon, like, especially you know coming out of lockdown. I reckon you could have got the actual cheeky girls to record a message. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Are they on Cavio? Hold on. Cavio. Cheeky girls. (laughs) This is going to bring up some results. And it's my work computer. Uh, uh, Maybe not. They seem to be on Instagram. Cheeky girls official. 122 posts. 2,664 followers. Man, wow! We need to yeah, get we need just... to get the cheeky girls to record us a little message for the next podcast. It's such a shame they're not on cameo, isn't it? Yeah, because it wouldn't be a pricey one, would it? You'd you'd have to assume not, wouldn't you? You just yeah, you'd yeah. have to assume That's not. That's funny. Um. <coughs> anyway, so um. This is the episode of Avatar. I'm so sorry for new listeners. If this is your first episode, I am very sorry. Uh, they always say everyone's, you know, it's that old statement about comics, isn't it? Everyone's issue, everyone, every issue is someone's first issue. So everyone's episode is someone's first episode. For those who don't know, a few weeks ago, or months ago even now, I said to Chris, oh, we'll do a cheeky Avatar. And he was like, there was nothing cheeky about the episode of Avatar. And I promised that I'd make the next one cheeky somehow. And um, I then forgot because there was a big gap in recording. Um, and I'm sure you've all been commenting under the episode that it was supposed to be cheeky. So I thought I'll have to figure out a way to make it cheeky. But then nothing really occurred to me. And then we were um, we were out for Nadia's birthday a couple nights ago and they played the cheeky girls. And I went, oh, yeah, that exists. And um, mm. made a mental note to play. And for those who don't know that, I mean, that song probably wasn't big in the States. Um, but for some reason, that that song was a big hit in the UK and probably Europe in general um, in like what the early thousands. Um, Yeah. Just was, it was a thing. Uh, That's where we were culturally. Yeah. And I mean, you know, sometimes it's good to, you know, keep thinking um, and not go with your first thought. um, (laughs) It has, it has led though, Dan, Jack D Senna, who played soccer, you can get a cameo from him for only £52.50. Oh, man. And even better than that, Greg Baldwin, who is Iroh, um, in his picture, he's dressed as Iroh. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because obviously he's the, he's the second voice double, isn't he, for Iroh? Yes, yeah. yes. Sadly, um, Mako uh, passed yeah, away, he, but that's incredible. He, yeah, in in his picture, he's literally dressed as Iron. How much does he charge? Uh, he's fifty six pound twenty five. Um, Toff for yourself, sixty three pound seventy five. Wow. Well. Uh, and there's no name behind Jenny Kwan, who I won't click on in case it's a spoiler or anything. But she's only thirty pounds. But I don't I don't know who she played. Um, what was the name? Uh, Jenny Kwan, K W A N. Let me click on her. 
I'll, just have a, I'll have a quick ones. look for you now, just to... Uh, Suki. Yes. Yes. Most expensive... Oh, no, joint most expensive is either Toff or Dante Basco. Again, I don't know who he Dante Basco, that's so. Zuko. Um, and that is dual reason, yeah. because obviously... Dante Basco, more famous, I would argue, for his uh, his role as Rufio in the Robin Williams film Hook, um, which yes, he plays uh, he plays quite an iconic part in that movie. Um, yeah, so there you go. There you go. Oh wow, that's fun. Um, anyway, back to the to the to the Earth King, which is this episode. I think they have, I think they, I want to say the eighteenth episode of the season. Um, Netflix's numbering is all wrong because they've merged episodes together. But I think this is the 18th episode of the season. Um, this is, of course, the episode where they finally barge their way in, meet the Earth King, tell him of the war, and then uh, sort of all uh, sort of basically this episode does a lot of moving the characters into position for the for, for, you know the final yeah, two episodes. An awful lot of um, that. Yeah, I mean, you really feel it, don't you? <laughs> yeah, you do. I will say they do it in. I think they do it in about as entertaining a way as you could. Um, oh yeah, I don't disagree with that. Uh, yeah. You know, it's it, it, you know the, the the whole journey of them trying to convince the Earth King is quite fun. There's a lot of them like you know like going around with him on Appa and stuff is quite a fun little bit. And then when you know they finally start to unravel a bit, we've got the you know we, we when they unravel the sort of plot a bit and thing, then there's like. They start setting up some very intriguing stuff for the finale, um, which we'll get to. But the ending of this episode is, I think, really powerfully done. Um, so it's a ton of fun. Um, like, it's going to be a hard one to review, though, because, again, its its function is setting up the finale. And does it do a good job of that? Yes. In isolation, what is this episode? <laughs> um, uh, some mildly entertaining stuff but like nothing really like stand out beyond the the last couple of moments i feel um so There's yeah a real jumble of tones which i don't think overly works like the bit where it's like they're the crowd cheering when like the earth king you know when he's like maybe i do believe them and they're like way and then he's like you know that stuff just feels a bit and then it cuts to like some really dramatic stuff after. I can't remember. Maybe it's the Zuko plot, but there is a bit of a mismatch all over the place in this episode. I think. Mm. Do you think? So, like, so for you tonally, like, it was a bit. It was a bit sort of. Was, well, maybe just that one scene. Like, but it really jarred with me that one scene where it happens. Mm, okay. Do yeah, they... and or no, maybe not even then. Like, even when they're trying to like prove like he's been bitten by Appa, and they're like, "Look, Appa's footprints," and then A- you know, Ang like slides in on the floor and and points to the teeth. Sorry, the teeth marks and, and the teeth and stuff like that. It just felt like a bit uh, slapstick. And then like you know, immediately after it cuts to Zuko having a crisis and stuff like that. Well, yeah, and obviously we're just coming off the episode where they where Long Feng was a big threat. And here he is having his drawers sort of blown up by Aang's airbending. Yes, like it's, he's, uh, yeah. He's played for laughs in the episode, but then by the end of the episode, we're meant to see him as a threat again, which is a bit jarring, yes. Yeah, I think you're right, actually. You know, I hadn't really... I, I, I assumed a lot of the reason this episode isn't like a favourite of mine is just quite simply because it doesn't really do a lot outside of sort of finale setup which is fine look we complained with the last finale that like there was a lot of like time wasted repositioning characters and stuff um so doing it now the episode ahead of that is a good idea and will probably lead to a more cohesive finale than the the previous one um which we had Mm. mixed feelings on if people remember like uh, we liked the first part quite a lot but the, the payoffs were a bit they didn't quite work um basically um which was an interesting one for me because obviously I didn't. I, I my memory of it was that I enjoyed it, but like, yeah, once I sat down with a more critical eye, I had a different a different opinion. Um, so yeah, I I think I agree with you. I think like actually one of the other reasons this episode sort of struggles to go down as like a classic or even one I particularly I never remember this episode as a whole. I remember moments from this episode, like the ending. I remember them eventually convincing the Earth King. I remember the opening actually really fun because the opening is great. Like for those who don't remember, this episode opens with this incredible action sequence where they they basically just decide, look, we've been here long enough, we've been we've been messed about enough, we've got Appa back, 
we can get out of here if we want, but we came to tell the Earth King. We've nothing to lose at this point. You know, Long Feng is kind of run off with his tail between his legs, but he's obviously not done. So we just need to take a ch- chance here and, like, you know, and, 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 and sort of go for it and do probably what we should have done from day one. Um, which is just storm the castle, basically. Uh, and then, they, you know, there's this incredible sequence where they come in from air and they're being shot at and then they land and there's this whole sort of, like, brilliant action sequence that actually totes the line between comedy and action really well, where they are not they don't want to hurt any of the Earth Kingdom soldiers because they're on the same side as them, but they're obviously not letting them in either. So they have to sort of be like, sorry, sorry, as they're, like, knocking them off bridges and making them comedically slide down steps, but it's also still somehow a really cool action sequence. And then it has the amazing, you know, the amazing payoff of, like, when they get in the building, they don't know where the Earth King is. Um, So they have to start checking different doors, and then Sokka finds the fancy door, and just as he's about to, like, you know, like, kick his way through it, like, air blasts it open, and, you know, Sokka enters the room, you know, by falling on his face, um... Which is all just like works really well. I think it's like it does feel epic, but it does also feel kind of funny. Um, and kind of does, I suppose, it's an attempt to set the tone for the whole episode. But again, the main last thing we saw was obviously, you know, was all, you know, was Jet dying. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> it was all very, yeah. it was all very serious. So it is a bit of a, a left, a bit left field. But that opening is incredible. I particularly like the choice to set it as sort of like, I guess like sunset, it's got like a dusky sky look. Uh, The color palette for that opening scene and the choice to make them not use lethal force um, and them apologizing as they beat up Earth Kingdom guys. Like that whole sequence is just epic. I love everything about it. Yeah, like there's, I really love the moment where I think it's Sokka's like, we're actually on your side. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And and, and when Toph like straightens out the stairs and they all slide down, they're just like, sorry, as they all slide by. But but it was worth noting that Toph is very much the lapis of this group. Uh, For those who understand. Yeah, we talked about that last week, didn't we? Reference. She's just so overpowered. (laughs) Yeah, and it's really there are shades of it's it's come it comes. I really like the stair thing because it was different to what we saw. Because obviously we saw a bit of a fight last week before Appa returns. Um, you know where they're lifting up the ground and using it as blockades and stuff. And mm-hmm. some of the, some of the fight this week sort of repeats some of those beats. I think, but it has really imaginative stuff like the stairs, which doesn't repeat any of those beats. So, yeah, I think if you were if you were bo- binge watching this, you might watch the beginning of that fight at least and go, "Oh, this feels a bit similar to what I've just seen." Um, but then the stairs and stuff are really unique and fun, so I think they get away with it. Yeah, it's a little mix, isn't it? It's a mix of stuff we've seen before and stuff that's like, new and imaginative. The show is very good at keeping mm. its action sequences quite fresh, I think, at least visually. Um, mm. They do sometimes repeat like techniques, though, in certain moves, which makes sense. Um, you know, you're not going to invent a brand new move every time if you've got one that works. Um, but it is, it's like Toph walks into a room and just clears it, and it's like, how is anyone ever going to be a threat ever again if Toph can just fucking like, walk into a room you know, raise her hands yeah. and then the ground literally swallow up all the enemies. Like it's, it's, yeah. it, it's, it, 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 it's, yeah. It's exactly what we talked about last week. Yeah. It is a, it is potentially an issue, but she's very much fighting, you know, in her territory and on her ground. Um, you know, it's, she's fighting earthbenders. Maybe it's, we've seen her get outsmarted in different ways when she's fighting other, other tribes. Mm. Um, I will say as well the one of the probably and maybe you know I you know we we've we've done a lot of these we've done a lot of analyzing and you know we did we did meet on a script writing course so maybe it's that but I think potentially one of the least surprising twists ever in an episode of Avatar which is at the end where we don't see the warriors we're just told that three have arrived and in your head, you just go, well, that's going to be the three fire. <laughs> that's going to be Zuko's sister. And like, <laughs> I didn't find that very, I thought that was very predictable. But I don't, I'm not even necessarily criticizing that because, you know, it's predictable for two minutes and then you see it. So it's not like they play it particularly as this big twist. Um, yeah, I think if they'd yeah, drawn it out for longer, that. you'd probably feel more annoyed about that. Yeah, I think that's a fair comment. 
Yeah, I think yeah, I feel like they get away with it on I, exactly as you just pointed out. It's like it's just they, they they resolve it pretty quickly. So it's the show isn't trying to pretend it's like, and we've had this card up our sleeves all along. It's more like, you know, a couple of minutes of oh, yeah. I wonder if that's going to be what I think it is, and then yes, it is. Which but and then I, yes, it is. I mean, it's yeah. It's it, the one thing I do really want to compliment this episode on. So it just it isn't just us ragging on it a lot. Um, I love this ending sequence um i like that you know they all have their missions you know that they're all sort of you know the the, you know it's there's this weird moment of like okay we all need to figure out where we're going here um the guru can help ang toff's mother in the city is in the city and needs and 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 seems to understand so toff's gonna go see her katara and sokka's dad has been located but someone has to stay behind to organize the invasion so katara agrees to say sokka's gonna go see their dad uh, which, by the way, I love. We'll come back to that moment. But Katara agreeing to let Sokka see her dad is a lovely uh, sibling moment. Um, then, uh, you know, they go off on their way. They're all heading off in different directions. And there's this real feeling of hope momentarily, right? It's like, this is all really coming together for them now. You know, Aang's going to go see the guru that's going to help them. The Earth King's on their side. Um, you know, it's all looking pretty good. And then it's like they hit you with three different butts you know um one being that Lo- the Dai Li is still loyal to Long Feng uh Toph being kidnapped trapped in a metal box by her old teacher and the wrestling promoter who I think they left out of the show just long enough to f- for you to forget they existed um yeah that was very well done yeah like they they they, they were gone for the perfect amount of time like, when did we last see them? We saw them in the desert fighting with Zuko and Iroh. Do you remember when they were yeah, looking for Toph so. and they bumped into and they tried to kidnap Zuko and Iroh instead for that payout, um, which was a bigger bounty or whatever. Um, I think that's the last time we saw them anyway. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments yeah, below. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it is though. Um, you know, and then we have the, th- the third hit, which is, you know, predictable, but still very powerfully done. When Azula looks up and she's in the makeup... And you go, oh shit! The at team avatar just vouched for the Kyoshi Warriors. They're Fire Nation people inside Ba Sing Se. Like, and not only that, but three of the most powerful Fire Nation people as well. Yeah, like you know, uh, you know, my, my Tai Lee, uh, May, May, May Tai Lee, and um, Azula are pretty fearsome and like the idea that it took iroh all those many months and years to try and get through the walls and they've snuck in under the guise of the kyoshi warriors because you know they they were smart enough to when they fought the kyoshi warriors obviously they you know we didn't see the end of that battle clearly we now know that they won um and took Mm. those costumes which is like does make you go like oh where's you know where's suki what's happened is she a prisoner what's the situation now um you know uh the other moment where it makes you you go oh damn is it there you know they, they've as a result of this but choice very smart tactical decision they're now inside and have the trust of the king like yeah that's and you know toff's been kidnapped ang and Sokka are gone Katara is really the only one who would be able to identify them as not being the Kyoshi Warriors now, um, and she'd be on her own. You know, it's it's they have definitely used this episode to make the finale feel like it's gonna be like an incredibly epic. Like they they so is that all we've got now? Two episodes? The yeah. Finale. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! So is that why they're because they're together on Netflix? But I assume we're reviewing them separately yeah they're separate episodes yeah it's uh the next episode is called the guru um and then the final episode is called the crossroads of destiny which is a a great uh, just a great title for anything really (laughs) yeah definitely Uh, um Um, i yeah i completely echo that i loved that last montage um it did feel a little bit full if i'm nitpicking um, if I'm taking a little, t- getting my walking boots on and taking a little trip to Nitpick I, I Corner. I put my, co- will it be cold to think- Nitpick Corner, Chris? I put my jacket on. Yes, yeah. Nip- get your jacket on. Um, get your get your cold winter coat um, and put your hands in your pocket and discover, you know, the the remnants of a year gone by. 
It's always a weird thing. I think Michael McIntyre does stand up about it, but like when you put on your winter coat for the first time and you put your hands in your pocket, there's just all this shit that's just from the winter before. Um, the not relevant, Dan, to what I'm saying. Um, nitpick corner. It, uh, it you you feel it like you know like <laughs> how how come. Well, actually, I suppose that now makes more sense because it was the boy, it was the guys tricking them. Like, but you are a little bit like what they can suddenly get letters, but actually, it does make sense because they knew where they were heading because they've been tracking them. So they've written a letter to her. Ang's letter was attached to Appa. Yeah, no. Even though when I first watched it, I was a bit like, this feels a bit coincidental. It feels like we're putting chess pieces in place. Actually, I don't think it's that bad because there is an explanation for it. Um, yeah, yeah they, they, really you know, like they're they're, tri- they're tricking Toph. We know the guru put the message on Appa. It makes sense that Long Feng would have taken all that stuff and kept it from them. Um, you know, Long Feng wouldn't have known that letter wasn't from Toph's mother. You do go. One big thing I did think is like, what's Long Feng's game? Is he after power? Is he? Does he just like control? Like, why is he doing this? I'd be very intrigued to know you know, in the upcoming episodes, whether we explore his reasoning. We have got some already. There was the conversation they had, um, the conversation they had at the party two episodes ago, three episodes ago, when he basically said, look, the city is safe. There's no point in creating, like, it's a happy place. There's no point in creating panic and dread and sowing fear amongst the populace by letting them know there's a war on. I'm dealing with it. These people inside these walls are completely safe because he's he he very much believes the hype of Ba Sing Se. But of course, Ang and the gang have seen Omashu fall. You know they've seen the the might of the Fire Nation, and they know that it's only a matter of time. And it'd be foolish, really, to think you were ever completely safe from the Fire Nation. I mean, you know, Long Feng is 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 blinded really by the drill almost. Like the, like the drill should have been the the, the wake up call. Look at the efforts, mm. look at the technological advancements. The, the Fire Nation are taking it real serious. And even then, even if you're lucky enough that you're right and they can't get through your defences now, 10 months from now when that bloody comment comes, you're really in trouble. They're all going to have extra powers. Mm. You're like, if, even if you're right and they, 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 you know, they can't, take your city now and you think it's better just to leave your people like the, it's the funny thing about long feng is he's wrong but i totally get it like if the people are happy and content and live peacefully not knowing about a war uh, even though the reality is you know they're actually all very miserable and being quite oppressed and having their brains washed and stuff like you know they're, they're, you know they're, they're all you know they're living under quite a lot of oppression but i do sort of understand his point even if i don't agree with it that's why i think long feng is a good villain mostly um he's a little bit jafar though i would say like the way he sort of like you know is the advisor to the king and like is the king is completely oblivious to what's actually going on um so i think they've kind of covered a lot of long feng's motivations um it's just that's it was fair. a few it was yeah, just a few fair. episodes ago now and um it's easy to especially when we're doing this where we're sort of watching them quite separate uh, you know, there's been a couple. It's been a couple of weeks since we watched one of these episodes. I think maybe. Um, oh no, it's only been a week. But there was a couple of weeks there. There was a gap because I got COVID. So, <laughs> um, yeah. so yeah, that's, no, that's, pro- I, I, that's kind of put a bit of a gap between the, the sort of the, the explanation of his character and like now. But do you, I mean, do, is that sufficient, or do you still want more? I don't know because I, I I do think there'd be room for more. Yeah, I think there's I think there's room for more. I think, you know, maybe, you know, he's got a backstory where he really suffered from the war, so he wants to pretend it doesn't exist. Do you know what I mean? He's blocking it out for that reason maybe. Mm. Um but like you say that feels a bit more that feels a bit deeper than we're going to go with him as a villain. Um which seems to be this sort of there's a bit of a trope for that in this show because, you know, it's not like there was a lot of depth to the guy who was, you know, who ended up under the ground and stuff. Who was that dude? Zhao. You know, the other gen... Yeah, Zhao. There wasn't, mm-hmm. you know... We didn't ever really explore motivations with Zhao um, no. as much. Um, so, and, you know, that, but that's fine because we get more time, you know, dedicated to Zuko. And the Zuko plot was one of my... I loved, you know, your feelings on the ending... 
are kind of my feelings with the Zuko thing. I was like, oh, it's kind of like a spirit world, but in his in his subconscious, does that mean that like Iroh, he sort of crossed a bit to the spirit world? Is it all within himself? I found that whole thing fascinating. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely one of the strongest parts of this episode because it's. I think it's it's one of the clearest. The pro- I think one of the issues of this episode. So we talked about the tonal disparity, but the other issue is by making this episode a moving the chess pieces around episode it means that narratively it's fairly messy it's not a here's our goal here's our it's you know it doesn't follow the story circle of here's the goal the heroes go on the journey to achieve the goal they do or don't there's you know they don't you know what i mean it it, it definitely doesn't follow the standard sort of like uh storytelling structure so it inherently feels sort of messy and slightly unsatisfying Mm. um as an individual episode in the grand scheme of the show, especially in a bulk watch uh, or a sort of a, you know, you know, if you're doing this is sort of like, um, what's what I'm looking for? A binge watch. You know, this episode's brilliant. It's perfect. It does exactly what it needs to do to sort of effortly set up the finale, uh, which, you know, then pays off a lot of the stuff they set up here. But as an individual episode, it, it, it does suffer for that. But on the other hand, the plot that does have a really clear sort of through line is the Zuko plot. Although I would say that is missing its conclusion. I was going to say, we don't see the conclusion for that, no. So even that doesn't even have a clean beginning, middle, and end. It has a beginning and a middle, but it doesn't really have its end, which I guess, you know, you, I mean, I, I don't guess, I, I know, we'll, we'll get to next week. But, um, <laughs> uh, but it sets up a fascinating kind of, well... It it is both fascinating and not like this notion of it feels very, you know, I talked last week with excitement about what that decision meant and, you know, what that meant for the character going forward and which way it would go, which way he would go. It's interesting that it's an incredibly overt, you know, we're literally seeing his subconscious fight that battle it's an incredibly overt way of doing that storyline. And that doesn't mean I don't like it, because like I say, this sort of spiritual notion, this sort of connection with the, you know, it, it felt very, the visuals of it felt very spirit world and stuff. And I loved all of that. So I'm not saying I even dislike it, but I think it's a very interesting approach. They're sort of, they could have done this storyline, you know, not as overtly. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I agree. There, yeah, I mean, to be fair, they kind of, I mean, they, they kind of did it last week. Like, I think, like the, you know, it's it, it, you could see the struggle in him last week. Did you need an episode of him having, like, literally getting ill over the choice and, like, you know, uh, having flu-like symptoms as he warred with himself? I mean, I wrote the line down from Iro. Um, what you did beneath that lake, it was in such conflict with your image of yourself that you are now at war within your own mind and body. You're right. There's a subtler way to do that um, without physically making him sick. Maybe just show him having the nightmare. Don't necessarily make mm. him physically sick on the outside. Um, that might have felt subtler. Might have. Because <laughs> that dream, the dream where he wakes up and he's got Ang's arrow contrasted with the dream where he where he's where he's the fire he becomes the fire lord you know um and has the two voices you know one good one bad talking to him you know one uh sort of represented by azula's voice one represented by iroh's voice um those dreams do enough right did he need to be physically ill in the real world couldn't we just show him struggling to sleep as the days went on well i think it adds more weight to the if well, yeah, more weight maybe, it, but if, like to address your concern of it, but not concern, but your you know your sort of your point of maybe it was a bit a bit on the nose. Yeah, maybe, but I think if you're going to go down the subconscious struggle route, it does make sense to then also do that. Um, but equally, I don't want I don't want you know a uh, Zuko in a flu like state for the finale doesn't interest me, <laughs> so I hope it doesn't necessarily stick around. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, Despite you, you, you want him you want you know. him to you want him in the action. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. And in the action, you know, it, it sort of implies he's going to go through this, comes to his, come to his decision and swoop in and save the day for the good guys. You know, it would be my assumption. And then we have, we have what I talked about the other week, this notion of Zuko training as the when i said it out loud i was like that i can't imagine anything else making sense now right um as much as zuko being the uh bender that teaches fire but i think it's potentially more interesting to have him appear in the action and not be sure whether to fight for the side of his sister or the avatar um mm. But if he's keep, got this keep, mean, keep, thing keep going him on. conflicted for longer, basically. Yeah, because I don't know how now. Now that you've connected it to this flu-like symptom, I don't know how it would now. As much as I'd prefer it, if he, if he, if they did that, he appears and he's unsure. I'd be like, what you mean? The subconscious battle which caused flu-like symptoms didn't come to a conclusion. Well, then, what was the point of it? So they kind of have to do the conclusion in that similar state to what he was in this episode now, surely. Because mm. otherwise, what was the point? Um, yeah. Mm. Well, but yeah, we'll have, to have, we'll have to have a chat over the next couple of episodes. But we'll keep an eye on the sort of Zuko arc because I'm I'm very interested to get your thoughts on what they do with Zuko in the next few episodes because you've pointed out a lot of uh, interesting potential options. Um, and I think what you're saying is, a lot of what you're saying is very smart, sensible, the sort of things that, regardless of what actually happens in these next few episodes, these are definitely the debates that these writers were having. Did you know what I mean? Like mm. they, they, when they were constructing this story, um, these were definitely the, the the options they were weighing up, without question. Mm. Um, so it'll be interesting to, to to get your thoughts on what they then actually choose to do, um, whether it matches or not. Um, and see how you feel about it in execution um but yeah i think for this episode again yeah so you're right so it's, it's almost like a three-part finale then because uh, because every plot really is unresolved this is like the least satisfying single episode of avatar in that sense because no no plot in this episode has, has a conclusion no, but I but it is it is a prologue, isn't it, to the finale? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's, yeah. I, I said that up front. It's like it's, I think that gets a pass as a result yeah. of that. But well, you know, most people probably watch it this you know watch this episode through through some sort of binge anyway. You know, um, but as an individual episode, if we're reviewing it for this this you know for this this podcast, it, it's sort of a tricky one to really. It, 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 uh, there's two ways you review it you review it in isolation and you go eh it's a little unsatisfying because it doesn't really there's no they didn't even give us one plot that sort of resolved itself within the context of this 20 minute episode so it's kind of an unsatisfying episode or you review it in the context of the show and you go this is the perfect use of this episode so that next week we just can go we don't need to position the pieces everyone's ready to do the stories that we want to tell yeah and the and the pieces they've you know and it's all in the conclusion isn't it because the pieces they've moved into place are just four really intriguing excellent cliffhangers you know it's like it's the end of the stolen earth the doctor who episode where you know there's so much jeopardy in every single bit um and i think you know maybe surprise shockingly though if you were if you were rating them you know, the show's called Avatar, but actually Aang taking a trip to the East Air Temple is probably the the one I least care about exploring. <laughs> right. You know, the Warriors, um, uh, Katara planning for batu- battle, Toph captured, uh, Zuko in this sort of state, and then um, Sokka, Sokka with his dad. seeing his dad are all more interesting to me. Partly, I think, because we've already seen the Eastern Air Temple. We know who he's going to. We kind of know what that is. Whereas a lot of the others are payoffs to things which have been hanging since episode one. You know, Sokka and his dad, for example. Um, So I think I naturally lean towards them. Yeah. Yeah. Not to put you on the spot or set you up for failure. Out of curiosity, then, what you know, you sort of feel like 
you know where the guru stuff is going what, what do you think the because i think ang said in this uh, i'm not i'm paraphrasing not quoting but uh, you know ang says you know oh he can help me control the avatar state you know that's what he says in his letter um so what do you think where do you what do you think the the where do you think that plot is going and does it take a, a, are you expecting ang to be out of the action for the finale if he's gone off for that or or what do you how do you think it's going to play out my my assumption would be he goes off does some learning you know has a chat with the guy and then returns to make a difference to whatever fight is going down with a controlled avatar state would be right. my assumption sure yeah that makes sense especially because you know azula is in the middle of the earth kingdom now like the idea that he might want to rush well, back he's, to well help. the show's the, sh- the show's called avatar the last bender i just don't know how you don't last airbender sorry i don't know how you don't put him in the it would be so unsatisfying as an audience member if he was out of action for the entirety of mm-hmm. of the of the action yeah so, i was yeah, I, I, yeah he, I was i was sort of he has to come yeah, back right right yeah i was kind of just playing out like the, the, the oh the no options. i know you were yeah yeah yeah, 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 no, no, um, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a it, again, it's a, it's a difficult episode to review. I think it's, I'm gonna say I like this one and that I think it's really good because I think ultimately this has to be, this has to be viewed as what it is. Um, we do like to isolate episodes in this in, in this podcast and say, do they work on their own? This one doesn't, but it's by design that it doesn't. Um, it, it, it didn't. It was never. They never tried to make it work on its own. They never pretended otherwise. This is very clearly um, a setup for a finale, um, and I think that it's a really good, engaging setup with a potentially exciting outcome. Um, I finished this episode both on my original viewing and now feeling very excited um, for where it goes. So yeah, how can you, you know, how what more can you ask of this episode? It's also got an awesome action scene, a really intriguing Zuko, you know, some really intriguing Zuko stuff. Um, yeah, like, well, I, I don't know what more you could actually ask for from this episode, to be honest with you, other yeah. than maybe some conclusion, but it's, it's, it's you know... We're about to get to the finale of the season. Conclusion should be coming there, not here. Yeah, no, I completely, I completely agree. So, Have you I would. Any other? Yeah. Notes oh. we've not talked about. Uh, it's a good question. Good question. You think I'd have checked that, but I didn't. Um, how do we feel about the Dai Li being still loyal to Long Feng? Then I, I, we haven't really talked about that one. Uh, it makes sense, I think, because he's had seemingly more face-to-face contact with them. Mm. He's been, you know the face and the voice of, of the king for so long that that just makes sense, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I like it too. But it also like makes the Dai Li feel quite dangerous, I feel. Like the idea that they're going to be outside of outside of Earth Kingdom control as such, you know, under yeah. this. And yeah, um, I think that's kind of fun. Um, I really liked um, the Earth. One of the first things the Earth King says is they broke down my fancy door. <laughs> Mm. Oh, what I really liked as well like soccer going to kick the door and not being able to yeah then I'm just blowing that was him a lot through of fun. it yeah yeah it's great um I also really like once again Ang easily slipping out of bindings that he's been put in it's a it's become a running mm-hmm. joke by accident I think um in this episode he gets bind uh, he gets his hands get tied up by the those kind of weird rock gloves that the Dai Li use and then there's a point when he goes to like I don't know scratch his nose or lift his hands up or something and he just obviously uses his earth bending to just undo them puts his hands in there and then puts them back and reseals them it's such a good moment and it's subtle and they're not they don't point it out like it's just in the animation it's great it's just such a fun little yeah. like the idea that he could get out anytime he wants but he is but choosing But again uh... I love these nods to, look, we've not seen a lot of it, but Toph's been teaching him. Like, his earth bending has come along so that, you know, right. we're two episodes away from the season, he presumably has to start bending fire as well. And they've done a good enough job of letting me know that Aang has learned the lessons along the way, more so than they ever did with water, I would say. Well, it was tricky. It was tricky with water because they kind of presented him as being a bit of a not prodigy, but like he picked it up very quickly because it was so similar yeah. to airbending. You know, it was uh, they had that whole water scroll episode where he sat and learnt with Katara, and she was getting annoyed because he was learning how to do it really quickly. 
um mm. you know so and then they had all that time at the at the at, you know at the northern war tribe before they left where he apparently learned a bunch but yeah it was all sort of done off off screen so it's a bit yeah um I don't know. Yeah, I I agree. I think that they they've slowly shown him getting more proficient at earth bending without actually showing him training. Um, whereas yeah, one day I he think could also just an, water bend. Uh, enough of the season has been traveling for you to buy that they found the time to do that. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. And um, there was that you know there was that episode where he was doing lessons in both um, you know as they were traveling. So yeah. Yeah, they kind of they kind of they kind of hit it from both angles, didn't they? They they showed him learning, and then they showed him getting better slowly over time, and then they had like mm-hmm. time passing while they were there in the Earth Kingdom in Barsing Say. So it's kind of like, yeah, okay, um, you sort of yeah between everything, it sort of builds up as to a, a builds a picture in your mind of Ang becoming a proficient Earth Bender. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I liked. Uh, I liked the whole sequence where they're trying to prove that the war was... I thought it was a fun diversion for the episode. It seems kind of ridiculous on the surface that they're just like walking around with the Earth King like, look at this. Oh, it's gone. You know, I'll take you to this, you know, and then they find the drill and then, you know, even though it does sort of hurt Long Feng in the long run, that he's like really lame excuses for the drill. Oh, it's a construction project. Why has it got the Fire Nation symbol on it? Uh, we imported it from the Fire Nation. <laughs> Yeah, I really enjoyed that as well. But it, it it is interesting that like it does jar against the Earth King being this big mythical thing for so long, and now he's just like in the town. But it kind of makes sense because he wasn't necessarily this big mythith- myth- mythical thing. Long Sang was hiding him. Right, and not only that, they do they do make multiple references to that a king has never been to the outer wall in hundreds of years. Mm. You know. So they do kind of make it. They do kind of tr- cover both. I think a little bit. But yes, you're right. Long Feng was That's obviously true. was hiding him. So that really added to all of that. Um, we haven't um, we haven't hit on a couple of other quick things. We've, uh, we should really talk about the uh, the little kiss on the cheek from Katara and the uh, and Ang trying to have his moment with her and then getting interrupted by yep. Sokka. All right, who's ready Very to get sweet. going on our men only man trip? <laughs> Yeah, very, very funny, very sweet. Enjoyed it. Yeah, did, 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 how do you feel about that? Because obviously, you're, you know, you're you're the you're the you're the you're the love guy. You like a good romantic subplot. Um, and trying yeah, to have a was... conversation with Katara, not happening. But then she gives him a kiss on the cheek before they leave, and he gets all blushy. Yeah, I thought it was very nicely played. You know, the notion being that they're about to part, so he wants to tell her how he feels before they part. But they get comedically interrupted. I thought it was played very nicely. And then her, the kiss on the cheek, almost being like a, I know what you were going to say here. I think it was just the, the right kind of pacing, the right kind of tone. Enjoyed it. Mm. Um, and then, obviously, we, we you know, Earth King riding Appa, that's quite fun. But it does have a moment on it. Before he's fully accepted, there's a war going on. Where he admits, you know, to be honest with you, like, I think I just don't want there to be a war. Like, mm. and he sort of admits that. And Ang is like, yeah, I wish it wasn't a thing either. Now, that was a really nice moment because it kind of showed that the Earth King is like a reasonable person. He's kind of like, he's he's acknowledging his own bias. Um, mm. And I thought that was, yeah, I just thought it was a really nice moment. Um, really humanized the Earth King a little bit for me there. Um, yeah i'd agree i thought that was nice i thought it was nice as well like the way toff was like yeah i don't like riding me him either you get used to it yeah that was a good moment too that's true yeah especially without the saddle that looked deeply unpleasant um in soccer's dream the other little thing i wanted to talk about i thought this was really interesting um he's sort of presented with these he's like he's like being torn between a voice represented by azula and one represented by arrow and and he's you know he sees himself scarless but as the fire lord um and in the end the dragon voice by azula sort of sends him to the depths and says sleep just like a mother so another little hint at the rather mysterious backstory um of his mother um did you did you pick up on that did you think that was particularly strong did you did, did that create more intrigue like or was it just did that just sort of wash over you as yeah yeah his mother disappeared we know that like how how did you sort of react to that moment 
A little bit of, yeah, we know about the mother disappearing. I didn't think too much of it because I was just so taken by, I think at that point being like, where, where are, where is he? I like, I was kind of trying to work out whether he'd cross to the spirit world right. like I seemingly can. And I think I was too excited by that. that I was not necessarily distracted. I definitely took it in and then acknowledged it, but it was more in a, oh yeah, we know the mums, you know, might be, mm. might be dead sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I liked the little team avatar hug at the end. They all give a little hug for the one of their separate ways. Um, and yeah, I did, that was very sweet. And I obviously like the idea that they've if they've trapped Toph, they've done it in a big metal box because obviously she wouldn't be able to bend away out of that. Pretty clever. Um, definitely makes you feel like that's a clever way to, to potentially get one of the more powerful characters out of the way, at least at the start of the next episode. Yeah. Um, mm to allow potentially the fire nation to get briefly at least if not properly the the upper hand you know sort of keeping toff and ang out of the way by having ang go off to the guru and toff being captured like that i think that's potentially a very exciting situation uh but we've already yeah the that. idea of like potentially katara and earth king people you know tribes trying to earth sorry earth tribes trying to fight off the three of them is is very exciting yeah, for sure. Um, I think that's all my like notes, um, other than just how dramatic those last moments are. What we talked about that. So should we? Should we? Uh, there's not a lot. Yes, but... trim it up. Trim it up. There's just three three little pieces of trim this week. Uh, the first one is uh, Sokka's line about surface to air rocks is a pun on the real world surface to air missiles or SAMs. Um, employing these projectiles means the palace would be prepared for an attack by Fire Nation airships. Um, it seems like Long Fang maybe did at least put some defences in place for that possibility, even if he didn't then tell the king about it. Um, after Aang receives his letter from Gulu Patik, um, Sokka inquires as to what a guru is, asking, some kind of poisonous blowfish? Uh, this is apparently, well, this is not apparently, this is a reference to the simile sounding word fugu instead of guru, which is a Japanese delicacy, um, which claims... The, year, the lives of several people every year because it's inadequately prepared. So uh, the blowfish is a is a is a poisonous uh, poisonous fish that, if prepared correctly, is a delicacy. But if prepared incorrectly, c- can kill you. It can be deadly. I think it's most famous in the West for like that Simpsons episode where they think Homer ingested an incorrectly prepared fugu. So the episode, the entire episode, is just what does Homer do with his last day on Earth because he thinks he's going to die in twenty four hours. Um, but yeah, that's that's apparently what that was referencing. Um, yeah, nice. Good reference. Yeah, so uh, the way Sokka opens various doors in the palace looking for the Earth King and finds the woman dressing in a room is very similar, apparently, to how Aang opened various doors in Zuko's ship while searching for his glider uh, back in, like, the first... Like, the second episode of the first season. Uh, you know, when they capture him, he agrees to go with yeah. them to save uh, Sokka and Katara's little village. Um, and then he escapes and goes looking for his glider and he opens all the doors. Apparently the shots kind of match that. Um, and then he fi- instead of finding a woman changing, he finds Iroh sleeping. Um, so yeah, there you go. There you go. That's, that's the triv. Nice. Ooh. Nice. Good triv. Where where can the people find us, Dan? Well, they can find us in many, many places, Chris. I mean, if they want to support us with, 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 them, with their money, with their hard-earned cash, <laughs> they can do so by going over to <laughs> Patreon. Uh, dot com um, slash nothing but static. I'm double checking that it's that. I always say it and then always. I was gonna say it sounded so uncertain there. Yeah, I, I, I had a, I had a moment of static. I had a moment of doubt, Chris. Yeah, fair enough. And it hasn't worked. Wait, 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 wait. Oh yeah, no, yeah. Patreon dot com slash nothing but static. That is it. Um, yeah. we ha- right. I, I want to take a moment actually while I'm here. Um, we have talked, I've talked so many times about how you can go support us there. Um, mm. and that it, you know, that we're always just about, we, we're always just under breaking even by a certain amount. It varies month to month as people cancel and change their, you know, their pledges. Um, but I want to just take a moment to thank a few people who've either pledged brand new in the last couple of weeks. Um, in fact, since the 1st of August, basically, we've had a, We've had a swath of people either increasing their pledges or um, uh, or pledging 
fresh. So some people who've done it before had to cancel and come back to us. A couple people who've upgraded them. And I just want to... I'm going to name a few people because we, we are officially, Chris, breaking even. Woo! <laughs> which is which is great news. And we're, we're so happy and thankful. It's worth noting, obviously, we record this ahead of time. So if your name is not read out and you have recently, it, it is purely because... You know, at the time of recording, you it, that might not happen. right. Yeah, so, yeah. So we're we're yeah. just to clarify, we're recording this the Wednesday, the fourth of August. So um, if you've you know increased your pledge recently, or and you're not mentioned here, I am sorry. We well, I, at some point, I will go through the names of some of the guys that, that have helped Zaya, but I just want to point out a couple of people yeah. who have particularly been very good um, and have, and have, have increased their pledges or changed their pledges recently. Um, so uh, Melissa Le- uh, Le- Leopardo, um, Carl, it just goes by Carl. Um, Spyro Smithy, um, uh, J- Jasper Lohman, um, and Naval G- G- Giles. Um, incredible. Like, just Thank he- you so he- much. heroes. Uh, they have done a lot for us um, by increasing or resubscribing. Um, particularly Jasper, who's who I won't out the amount but it's 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 a lot <laughs> and um it's 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 what's pushed us into the it's what's it's what's it's what's pushed pushed us into being uh, sort of neutral like we we which, no longer are was, losing money doing the podcast and that which was a huge goal for us like we've been doing this nearly 10 years and we've we've financed it ourselves the entire way through and you know no one asked us to do it that was our decision but we never had lofty goals of like you know earning money it was always just breaking even and yeah. it paying for itself so the fact that it's doing that now thanks to everyone's support is is amazing and, and it's we, all, we thank it, you so much and it's only in recent years as we've expanded the podcasts beyond nothing but static because we did like four or five years of just nothing but static before we mm. expanded and really when it was just nothing but static the costs were quite low but Every time we add a podcast, that doubles our costs because of the way the pricing works for hosting on a site like um, our hosts over at uh, Libsyn, who we love and have, have always given us great service and reliable service. It is one of the more expensive ones, but my, my logic has always been I've seen so many companies that host podcasts rise and fall in the 10 years we've done this. And... Um, I never wanted to go with a service provider that, uh, for any of our main podcasts that was free because if that company goes under, our podcast vanishes. So uh, something like um, something like uh, Overanalyzing the Garden Wall, we just put up on Anchor for free um, because there was only 10 episodes and they're there. And if that ever goes under and those episodes disappear, they're still on the YouTube channel. It's not the end of the world. You know, it was a, it was a small side podcast mm. anyway. But for all of our main podcasts, analyzing Avatar, Nothing But Static, uh, Fringe Observer, Steven University, these are all hosted with Libsyn for a reason. You know, and and we still pay for the podcast. We don't even do new episodes for at the moment. Like so, Fringe Observer still costs us money because we have to keep the archive up on there. And um, I'm happy to do that. And it still gets a lot of listens, like genuinely. And I just you know. Um, I would hate for those to go away ever, um, and 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 so you you guys are really giving us the opportunity to keep the back catalog alive um, because again servers these service like, hosting things are, are not are not cheap they're not expensive but they're not cheap either you know um, there were there are cheaper ways to do it but just less reliable um, so yeah we. I, I just want a massive thank you to everyone who supports us on the Patreon. Like the, the, you know, we're not earning a great deal of money. You can go look. Um, it's 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 not a huge amount, but it's it's it means a lot to us because it covers our costs. So, um, yeah, thank you. To, yeah, absolutely. Thank does. you to there's, uh, currently there's 34 active patrons, and you're all bloody heroes. Um, and come join the Discord. It's a you know it's a fun place to be. He he says not having been on for a while, but uh, I need to sort that out. But yeah, it's a real great kind of community that's built up so you know thank you so much yeah absolutely you know it's definitely Um, worth if you don't support it's worth you know joining the community and and having some fun yeah so when you yeah when you join the patreon you get a link to the to the discord um where you can come either you can send messages directly at uh, myself and chris chris doesn't currently have access to his but it's you know you can do um but we're also you know we're quite i'm quite active in there um also like 
you know, it also gives you the opportunity to get episodes a week early of Analyzing Avatar and Rewind Reviews. Um, and also, you can ask questions, which we haven't got a listener question this week, but, you know, we'll, we'll just do those as they, crop, as they crop up now. Maybe for the next season of Analyzing Avatar, I'll build up a few before we start recording that season so that we have a bunch consistently. But w- un- until then, I'll probably just lay off asking people for questions because, again, there's only 30-odd of you and it seems crazy to pester you all for questions all the time. But, um, you, welcome, if, you know, anyone who signs up can do that. And if anyone wants to add to that, um and support us you absolutely can um over at the patreon that's amazing other ways you can support us of course are uh, itunes um you can just go and like review the podcast that's a massive help youtube just like a couple of the videos or subscribe that helps massively um if you're listening on like google or amazon or any of those other platforms they do have their own review format same with spotify i think where you can either you know star it heart it like it whatever and that tells the service that you enjoyed the 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 content and then they're more likely to suggest it to others um and that helps us out so there's a free way to help us out too so if you're really enjoying these podcasts and you don't want to help us but you but you 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 uh don't want to uh you know join the patreon which is absolutely fine (laughs) um never give what you know if you can't um but you know there's there's free ways to help us too which is those or as I've said in the past, you can just listen. That helps too. Being a listener, sticking around, that is also a big deal to us. Um, so yeah, that's those are the ways you can support us. Um, I don't know if I've already mentioned it, but yeah, twitter.com slash... Twitter.com slash? Twitter. Dot, <laughs> well, Twitter, at Dan Doolan, and at C Billingham. Uh, you can also email us, mail at nothingbutstatic.co.uk um, if you want to send us a message. There's obviously the YouTube comment section of this video if you want to comment on anything. I've been really bad at getting back to YouTube comments lately, but I promise I'm going to make an effort uh, to go back through a bunch of them and reply um, at some point soon. So um, if you've had a co- if you left a comment and I haven't replied, um, I will do, I promise, at some point as soon as I can. Um, I'm... I will go back through them. I definitely read them all. I just don't always respond to them all. Um, so yeah, I think that's I think that's everything. Oh no, of course we've, well, we've got a, a little shout out for Rafo. So uh, for those of you who have seen the key artwork we use in this podcast, which is Appa and the gang in front of the sunset, um, that was drawn by Rafo Draws over at instagram.com slash raffo draws or launchlinks.io slash you slash raffo draws uh, where you can get access to Rafo's Tumblr, Twitter, YouTube, Redbubble, where there's a bunch of awesome art. Uh, by Raffo, but some of it you can purchase as like merch, and there's a web comic, and there's a there's a graphic novel, I think. Tons of great stuff. Go check it out. Um, really worth supporting and and, and showing Raffo some love. Um, other than that, though, I think that is everything. Um, thank you for letting us take a minute to be sort of all oh, sad, grateful, sad and grateful. <laughs> we love you guys. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird when we get sincere on this podcast, but uh, no, but it it means it means the absolute world. We're very we're very uh, proud of of the the Discord community and the the ability to be able to break even means means a lot. So yeah, no, it's uh, very we're very thankful. Yeah, um, so yeah, thanks guys so much for listening. Um, I've been Dan Doolan. I've been a cheeky boy. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when we don't do it properly. Do it again. Right, okay. I, I've been Dan Doolin. <laughs> I've been Chris Billingham. <laughs> that is everything for this week on The Cheeky Boys. <laughs> uh, I can't let this play for too long because uh, we'll probably get dinged on the bloody <laughs> copyright. Yeah, probably. We're getting, we're getting dinged for stuff you performed, let alone, let alone stuff that's actually other Genuinely people. Genuinely happened, guys. We got a copyright strike on the piece of music I recorded for this podcast the other day. Um, they've dropped the claim today, actually. I got an email this morning. Um, they've, they've obviously actually listened to it and gone, oh, yeah, it's not the same piece of music. And they've dropped the claim, which I'm very relieved about because it meant we would have made no money on the video. But there you go. Um, so, yeah, thanks, everyone, for listening. I've been Dan Doolan. <laughs> I've been Chris Billing. And we'll see you next time when we sit down to discuss The Guru.